Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Oh, here we go again. Quick slurp of the old coffee. I'm going to um, try and redo this one today as, um, as, as a, in a kind of bookmarky kind of way. It's chilly this morning and uh, my hands are frozen and I've only got one pair of socks and one pair of uh, lip warmers on. Oops, I've run out. So, um, consequently, my toes are cold, along with my hands. Uh, so I'm putting washi tape around this piece of paper. This is a piece of Bockingford cellulose, 140 pound, which is 300 grams per square meter. I absolutely loathe it when people say GSM. It's not GSM, it's grams per square metre. That's the... That's what it is. Um, okay, I'm just going to eyeball it here and um, tape off my bookmark sections. It's all about the dogs barking. Not sure what's got into them today. Well, I actually, I do know what's got into them today because there's the neighbours neighbouring farm, they've put their cows into the field and uh, they've been in all winter, those poor animals, and they have to be our sheep are indoors too because otherwise the grass gets totally ruined when we have very bad wet weather and it's just the way it has to be. They're quite comfortable inside but I think they've just let theirs out now. I normally put my um, washi tape on this um, uh, sellotape holder usually have a thin one and a thick one side by side like that and that works really well so yeah sellotape dispenser gone floral so put that out of the way and okay so these um uh poppies i did them yesterday and they're done in a really simple way this is ink and wash well it's not wash it's not actually ink and wash it's paint and then um, detail added using uh, ink and the ink will be this which is a 0.1 Stettler pigment liner could be any fine liner uh, the finer it is the smaller your lines are going to be and um, that of course will give a slightly different effect um, I'm going to use a large round brush. This is the size 12. This is a Princeton Aqua Elite. And I'm going to use a, um, a red from my Kiritake set. And I think the one I used was this one, which is um, cadmium red. So you'll have cadmium red for sure in your sets of uh, paints. I should imagine. Um, I'm going to use it fairly thickly. Just make sure I'm doing the right one. So it's this is Rose Madder. That's Carmen. That's just red. This one is Cadmium Red. Cadmium Scarlet. Oh, hang on a second. Rose Madder Deep. Carmen. Rose Madder. No. Red. Cadmium red, cadmium scarlet. So it's cadmium red. That's the fourth one down. I'm just going to pick up a bit of that. I think that's the one I used. Cadmium is a slightly opaque 
it's not completely transparent colour, um, which I think is probably fine. Uh, this one is, no, that's too pinkish. So I think, I think it's cadmium red. I need to try it, don't I? I need to test it on a piece of paper. So here's a piece of paper. Is that the same? Yes, I would say that was the same. So I'm going to recommend cadmium red. Uh, whether it's a Kuretake or whether it's any other. And then I'm just going to put blobs of paint. The more random, the better. And a small one here and maybe, uh, where should we put the other bud? Maybe down here. And, uh, and then I wash the brush out and I'm going to go into my green here, which I don't think is quite dark enough. So I'm going to add a bit of blue, make it darker. Now I'm going to sit down to do this because I need to keep my hands still. So, and I'm just going to paint the base and then I'm going to take the brush down very fine for the uh, uh, stem. This is a um, bud. So we'll just do that and we will allow the, let's do some sort of little spiky bits there if you fancy it. Then I'm going to pick up some black, any black will do. And we're going to drop some black, make it nice and thick, somewhere, anywhere, doesn't matter, near the top, like that. And then we're just going to let that do its thing. Sorry about the sniff. It's because it's so cold. Right then. Oh gosh. I just wanted to do this, but normally I wait for the studio to warm up a little bit. But I did the these poppies yesterday and um, I just wanted to do them today. And maybe it's because they're such a nice warm colour. And I thought, uh, um, we need something warm. I know it, it's actually February at the moment, which is not what I would call uh, the middle of the summer, which is where these come from. So, uh, you know, whatever. Let's put a bud down here. Let's put a bud here. It makes it harder to paint the stems in when you put buds in, but... We're, we're strong, we'll make it happen. Don't, uh, what's the word? Don't fuss over the, the bit where the stem joins onto the flower. Just, just go for it. Don't try and do it perfect. It's not worth it. Just keep it nice and fine, like that. And um, there's the centers. And then, before it's even completely dry, I'm just going to do the two to start with. Before it's even completely dry and trying to keep your hand off of it, we're going to do some um, 
I don't know what do you call these stamens, aren't they? Stamens. Just dragging the paint out. When it's wet, the paint affects the pen, so you have to be patient. So we'll do that, but then um, I might put some here, and we'll do the same on this one. I probably shouldn't use the pen to do this. Probably more sensible if I didn't. up a video yesterday, um, a doodle video, and the thing is with the doodle videos it's so much easier to just let your mind wander and so I was chatting about all sorts of things, everything from Tom Hanks and Philadelphia uh, to, you know, whatever, whatever came into my mind, which was a lot of stuff. But when you're actually concentrating on trying to do something like this, which is, I know it's, it's simple, but it does take a little bit more um, concentration, then your mind doesn't tend to wander quite so much. So some people might prefer that. Just dabbing out there where the black has run to give us the edge of the nearer petal. If, if you put the black in while it's still very wet, you'll get a lot more running. So you might want to dab some of it out and then come back in again with some nice thick cadmium. Just paint over where you had to lift it out. There we are. Now, those ones are going to have to dry so that I can then come in with the pen. Right. So frilly edges, lots of lines. And this is, you could, you could call this a little bit like doodling because you're going to cop, follow the line of the red part and just emphasize the shape of the petals and try not to do that. I'm very bad about that. This paper there. And then we're going to come down the stalk with with a pen line, like that. And if I remember rightly, these buds have sort of hairs on them. This pen's working better, so that's good. Just emphasize the stems a little bit. And uh, the looser you can keep these, the better, I think. So don't sort of try to be too accurate, just break up the lines. not working properly today. I'm going to put a little bit more red in here. Oh, yeah. You can also as well, of course, lift the center here by just dropping in some 
white dots. Like that. And they'll dry a little bit darker than that. Don't bother with leaves, we just put some of uh, these uh, calyxes or whatever they are. Okay, so that's, that's that one. This one. To the stalks with the pen just to get more interest. I really personally, I really like the combination of um, pen and ink, um, pen and paint. And then in a minute, I'm going to um, try number three, which is going to be a different flower. Okay, so we've got two poppies and my right hand is going quite numb. I'm just going to put in a little bit more red here and maybe a little bit more there. I have that from time to time. Um, now I wanted to show you, I think it's in here. This paper, this is um, a Hanamula, um, Hanamula bamboo mixed media paper. Um, I really like this paper. It seems to suit my style really quite well. I, I need to get some, some more of it. However, um, yesterday I had a delivery from Etcher, who have sent me, um, yeah, some more of these. Uh, Etcher watercolour paper, 100% wood pulp, vegan friendly. It's good. Uh, so that means it's not sized with um, the usual gelatin. Um, so I don't know what they do use. I don't know if it's planet friendly as well as vegan friendly. I, I ought to try and find out actually what they use it, what they use on it as their sizing um, before I go madly recommending it. This one is 100%, 10% uh, cotton, 90% bamboo. And again, I don't know how planet friendly bamboo is. I know it grows very fast. So there's probably quite a lot of it around. Probably comes from China, I suppose. Um, this is a little bit lighter than um, the normal 140 pound or 300 gram per square meter. It says here it's 265 grams per square meter, 125 pounds. Um, but I find this is quite nice. And um, yeah, I did that one. That's yesterday's poppies. And I also uh, tried out some crocuses. And I'm going to have a go at those now here in, in this this um in this um, 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 um space that's the word right so the color that we're going to use will be this one which is cobalt violet that one and again i'm going to be very um, 
What's the word? Uh, easygoing. Easygoing is good. Just three petals like that, or three indications of petals. They have. They tend to have slightly rounded tops, so we do away with the point. And uh, let's have another one down here. And I might as well go ahead and do another few. I don't want that to be sharp. It's got to be rounded. Wrong brush, really. It's only too good at making round uh, sharp points, isn't it? This one. So we just uh, just put in uh, like that. Any old how. Clean the brush, and then we want some green, but we want a greyish green. So let's um, let's take what colour is this? And that. And then some yellow. That'll do. So we just put in some green stems there. And then the leaves. Just random. Same over here. These ones perhaps a little bit more greyish, just for change. Okay, so that'll do for that. And then um, we're going to have to put in some yellow. So I will find myself a piece of tissue paper. Yellow for the centres. So just blot out an area in each one. Okay. some yellow, saffron yellow. This is, um, this is actually cadmium, I think. Maybe I'll go with this one, it's a bit, a bit brighter. And now, Time is near. We start with the leaves, and I'm going to do lots of parallel lines down the leaves. To give them the, the texture that they deserve, and I'm just Noticing now that after having done um, a couple of paintings already, I'm starting to maybe relax a little bit and allow my alpha 
brain waves to kick in a bit. So you start to be a little bit more in tune with your subject. This is what happens, you know, and I'm sure it happens to all of the people that do YouTube. You know, your the painting that you do when you're I'm going to go for a slightly thicker pen here because that's not a bit not quite strong enough. Um, the paintings that you do when you're just messing around, doodling at home, preparing. I'm really getting very frustrated. I'm not, not frustrated at all. No, no, none of my pens work. I think I might have a set here that are broken, worn out, exhausted. Like me. Um, oh, really? This is what happens when you work on wet paper, just, just so you know. <laughs> I'll tell you what, here's the thought. I was listening to somebody, I've got to say this, I shouldn't, I don't suppose. I, I, I was listening to somebody talking about um, the benefit of painting and drawing to um, take your mind off of your woes. And I have absolutely no problem with that. In principle, it's absolutely true that um, uh, when you are doing something with your hands, you are less likely to be concerning yourself with the everyday traumas of life. And that's um, one of the reasons why the world's in the mess it's in at the moment, because so many people never, in their working life, and even at school, they don't use their hands to create with. And human beings, we're... You know, we might have souls and we might be wonderfully um, spiritually advanced and totally different from the animal kingdom in some ways, but in some ways we're not. And our hands were designed as tools to help us to survive. And if we don't use our hands as tools to help us to survive, that is to say, to create things, to build, to cook, to um, even write and paint, because if you go back to the Stone Age, you know, the, the Stone Age people drew on their the walls of their caves to leave messages for people and to um, explain to the gods that they, uh, you know, that they did worship them and so on. It was very, very important to be able to use your hands um, in a way that, you know, gorillas and monkeys rarely can and don't usually bother. They use their hands to forage for their food and so on and so forth, things that keep them alive. They don't use their hands, and we shouldn't either, to only press buttons and, and make things happen on our phones and, and, and so on and so forth. I do believe that we are destroying ourselves by only um, using technology to achieve everything that we want to achieve in the course of a day. And the idea of artificial intelligence being the way forward in art is complete anathema to me. And I hope I am dead and gone before um, artificial intelligence reaches its peak because it's just, it's all wrong. It's its so wrong. We've got everything wrong, wrong, wrong. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Yes, so this person was saying that to relax and to find peace and to get away from your daily um, trauma, 
you 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 can paint or do something um, creative because she said um, she had been told that the same part of the brain that um, worries about traumas and stresses is the same part as the one where creativity is embedded. Now, I'm sorry about this, but I'm going to completely disagree with that because creativity does not reside in one part of the brain. You know, it's it's true that if you are drawing and painting, you don't think about your troubles. But it doesn't have to even be particularly creative for that to happen. The creativity draws on every part of the brain. It's not just in one section, and it's not certainly not in one section where you keep all your worries. It's not. Creativity relies on all functions of the brain. It relies on connectivity between different sections of the brain. You need, you know, you need visual, auditory, colour, everything. And um, so that's wrong. And I just had to say that. I don't have any axe to grind. I just don't want people to think, old, it's out of date. That is out of date. I use, I was taught that at university when I studied psychology, um, that there was probably a location for speech and there was probably a location for creativity. And But nowadays, the scientists have decided that the brain tends to work more globally, which makes more sense to me, and all parts of the brain are required in order to achieve um, what what we can achieve. So, so there we are anyway, just rambling on while I'm enjoying myself here scribbling. And uh, so yes, so now we have um, something resembling a crocus. We've got a few dots in there because I don't know what else would be in the center. You could put some spatter on. I don't know whether to do that or not. I don't think I will actually. So I'm going to take the um, tape off. could reuse this. I could reuse it. I didn't need it in the end because uh, I, all I used it for really, the tape, was just to show me where each um, bookmark is going to be positioned. Okay, I'm not going to reuse it because that is essentially too short for that. And we will take our knife, our cutting pad, mat, and I'm going to cut closer-ish, close-ish. about the dogs. Hold that down for them. You, I'm sure some people have got, um, what do you call them? Um, guillotine type of thing, paper cutter sort of thing. Whoops. <laughs> that one wanted to go closer. Oh, that's quite a wide one. You can always trim them off a bit more, lose a bit of the painting if you want to. These would make very nice little cards as well, of course. These designs are ideal for all sorts of purposes. You could even use a card this shape to write on, couldn't you? Write on the back of it. 
you could use these designs for your junk journal, your, not junk journal, art journal. Uh, my junk journal turned into a memorabilia journal. I'm going to make another one because I enjoyed the process of book finding. Actually, sewing the, um, what do they call them? I've forgotten the word. Um, not chapters. Oh, you know, there's different sections of the book. Sewing them in place. It's great fun. Okay, so there we are. That's done. We will punch a hole in the top and we will call them bookmarks. Hope you enjoyed that. Have fun with that. Warms up your hands. My feet are starting to come back to life now. And um, yeah, give us a like and subscribe, turn on notifications and all the rest of it. Visit us at dianenton.com for free downloadable sketches. And if you have any questions, put, put them in the uh, comments below or else go to our website and send me a, a personal message and I always answer. Maybe not on the same day, but I do get round to it eventually. So there we are. There's the original focuses and poppies. I'll say bye-bye for now then, everyone. Bye-bye.